Namaste everyone. So this video is dedicated to you, especially if you already have a scheduled Vedic astrology reading with me, to give you a little introduction into how is it going to look like and also what are the major differences between Vedic astrology and Western astrology. First of all, you will notice that zodiac is a little different. Yeah, because Western astrology uses tropical zodiac only, while in Vedic astrology, we primarily use sidereal zodiac. So for example, if you know from Western astrology that let's say your sun is in this and that sign, in Vedic astrology, it might be actually a different sign because there's more than 20 degrees difference between those two zodiacs. This is because in Vedic astrology, we actually align the rashis or zodiac signs to the fixed stars in the sky. We don't align the zodiac to the movements of the sun, which are changeable in nature and changeable over bigger cycles of time. We align them to the fixed stars. So the zodiac remains the same, no matter how many years pass. So zodiac is basically 12 signs or 12 compartments of the sky. So if you can imagine the sky as this 360 degrees, you know, full circle, what are you doing or what are we doing is we divide it into 12 equal parts and this gives us 12 zodiac signs and also 12 houses. How do we know where the first house is? That's exactly the sign or the star that was rising during the moment of your birth on the eastern horizon. So that is your ascendant, your first house. Opposite to it is the seventh house on the west. Tenth house is always right above your head and fourth house is always right below you. So the houses in Vedic astrology depend on what is the time of the day that you are born at. This is why the time of your birth is so important. For the reading. Now, one very important thing that I will be also referring to a lot during our reading are the nakshatras, the lunar mentions. So what are the nakshatras? You see, in the same way how 12 zodiac signs are basically 12 parts of the sky, the nakshatras are 27 parts of the sky. So it's basically as if you divide once again this 360 degrees into 27 equal parts and you superimpose it on this zodiac, on these 12 compartments. Nakshatras are a really beautiful aspect of Vedic astrology because nakshatras or the lunar mentions allow us to see a little more detail from your birth chart. They are always connected to some stars in the sky. And each nakshatra has its presiding deity, its shakti, its power, its blessing, its curse, its ruling planet, its shadow sides and its bright sides. And nakshatras are truly beautiful to study because the more you study them, the more you get to realize that whether we know it or not, consciously or not, we do replay those very same stories that these gods went through as well. And sometimes we replay those stories in a beautiful way and sometimes we end up entangled in them in not so nice way, depending on what placements are of course present out there in the sky. And this is also, you know, one thing why I personally love Vedic astrology so much and why I was drawn to it in the first place and not to Western astrology. Because Vedic astrology sees every single aspect of time as a manifestation of God himself. In fact, the Puranas say that God is present in two forms in your life. He is present as the soul within you and he is present as the time without you. Internally, he is present as the soul. Externally, he is present as the force of time. So every planet in Vedic astrology is seen as an expression of the divine, as one of the avatars of Lord Vishnu, as one of the divine incarnations and messengers of time itself. 
Every zodiac sign is seen in the same way. Every nakshatra is seen in the same way. And this is a truly beautiful thing. Because when we look at Vedic astrology from that perspective, we stop judging, you know, our planets and our placements and telling them that this is a bad placement, that's a good placement. We start noticing the hand of God in that. And we start seeing a divine purpose of what we are experiencing and what we are going through. And that also eventually helps us to engage in this process of life in a more conscious way. So this is the main thing, truly, you know, that's how mainly the reading is going to look like. I will firstly address, you know, all those placements that you have in a chart. I will most likely spend a little bit more time addressing those placements which cause you certain trouble in life because, of course, you would like to resolve them somehow. Of course, you would like them, you would like those things in life to improve in some way. So this is something that we'll be talking quite a lot about. But it's not just that. Because guess what? You are not the same person for your whole life. So even though you have certain planetary placements which are revealing your overall karmic blueprint, you're not going to stay the same your whole life. You are continuously changing and evolving. And this aspect we see through the Mahadashas or the great planetary period that you are going through. So we'll spend some time talking about those as well. We'll also spend some time talking about some finer layers, you know, of your being. And I will be sometimes referring openly to those, uh, sometimes a little less openly, but always before doing a reading for you, I am also looking at your divisional charts to see how your planets perform there, what is their hidden potential, is there perhaps some latent talent inside of you, latent potential that is not being channeled fully, you know, in external reality? And how can we tap into that and actually make it flow? So these are the things, the main things that we'll be talking about. This is also what makes Vedic astrology reading quite different from Western astrology, which you might be used to. And of course, I look forward to talking to you. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Namaste.